This is the Bringing Business to Retail podcast and with the holiday season looming, we are going to talk all about customer experience and shipping with Rob Hango Zada from ShipIt. Welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast on selenanight.com. Stay ahead of the competition by opening your doors to business experts so you can learn, grow, and be inspired. Passionate about bringing business strategies to independent retailers, please welcome your host, Selena Knight. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. Now, I've been talking a lot about Black Friday and Cyber Monday, both here on the podcast, inside of my Retail Academy group, and even on my Friday night meal prep and marketing strategy Facebook Live. If you don't follow me on Facebook, make sure that you head over to The Selena Knight on Facebook and follow me because every Friday night while I am making burgers for my family, I give you great marketing strategy at the same time. It's a lot of fun. We don't take ourselves seriously. Well, I don't take myself seriously and the people who watch don't seem to take themselves seriously either. It's a fun way to spend 15 minutes on a Friday afternoon slash evening. Generally happens somewhere between quarter to six and 6.30, depending on how busy we are. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you follow The Selena Knight over on Facebook. But the reason I am talking so much about Black Friday and Cyber Monday is because it has the ability to put so much money into your bank account in the lead up to the holiday rush. Now, if you listened to last week's podcast, I threw a couple of stats at you. One was that the average person in the US spends just over $400 in that five day period from Thanksgiving through to Cyber Monday. And the other one was 91% of UK retailers and 87% of US retailers participate in the Black Friday deals. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, it means that if you aren't participating, there's a pretty good chance that your competitors are. So do you really want to miss out and have your customers going somewhere else? Now, on my Friday night Facebook Live, I talked about, it was a question that actually came up in our group, which was when you have a premium brand, what kind of offers can you give for Black Friday and Cyber Monday? And that was a totally awesome question, one that was very, very pertinent. So that is what I did my Friday Facebook Live about. So if that's if you are a premium brand and that's something that interests you, you can always just go and watch those as replays over on my Facebook page at The Selena Knight. Now, I kind of feel like Black Friday and Cyber Monday is the kickoff to the holiday rush. And just some more stats is that most people who buy in that period aren't buying Christmas presents. They're buying for themselves, which is awesome because it means you are not eating into their Christmas budget. But with more sales comes more orders, right? More things that need to be shipped out. And there is a huge influx in parcels going all around the world to their new homes in time for Christmas, which can be a logistical nightmare and even worse, a customer experience minefield. And that is not what you want to be giving your customers when they're already rushed, they're already frazzled, they're already stressed because there are so many things going on. You want to give them a smooth, seamless, happy experience so that they come back and shop with you again and again, right? So, I brought on somebody who is seriously in the know when it comes to what customers want and maybe more importantly, what retailers need when it comes to getting your orders to the customer in the best possible way. So in this episode, Rob from ShipIt is going to share with you their behind the scenes knowledge and even some experiences that they've had recently when they had a totally unexpected, massive influx of customers and what they've done to handle that transition. Now, if you've tried having Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales in the past and you just haven't been able to get the results that you wanted, in fact, if you've tried promos and sales in the past and you just haven't got the return that you've been expecting, head over to selenanight.com forward slash UPC and check out my ultimate promotions creator because inside you will find 
not only a step-by-step checklist that tells you weeks out what you should be organizing, but I've also got templates in there for your graphics. I have swipe copy for your emails that you can literally cut and paste into your emails so that all the hard work is done for you. And there is even a marketing budget calculator where you can actually work out how much you need to spend to get the results that you want. Now, those are just part of the amazing things that you will find inside the Ultimate Promotions Creator. So if you want to create effective promotions that actually give you a return on investment and fill your cash register, then head over to selenanight.com forward slash UPC. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. As the busy season approaches, I am sure that you are going to get inundated with loads and loads of online orders. Whether you're a physical store or an e-commerce store, this can lead to loads of problems. Good problems, but bad problems. So today I have Rob Hangozada from Ship It, who I just asked him how I was saying, I was saying, ship it a logistics aggregator. And here's what he came up with. I had to write it down. We're a retail logistics tech platform. So completely, uh, I like to call them wanky words. We might have to put an explicit on this already. Uh, but I brought Rob on because I met him at a panel. In fact, I was actually stalking ship it for quite some time, but they're a little bit aloof and didn't get back to me, AKA, I say aloof, but they've been super busy and he's going to tell you why. But I finally managed to wrangle Rob to come on the show today to tell you how I give you his advice. And his advice comes from 100% experience of dealing with retailers and the crap that they go through during the peak season. So welcome to the show, Rob. Hi, Selena. Thanks for having me. I'll be bringing more wanky words with me as well. So don't worry. (laughs) Okay. Now let's just say... I know why you haven't been able to come onto the show until now because something big just happened literally in the last week here in Australia when it comes to logistics. I actually hate that word because logistics sounds so big business. So can we just call it shipping? <laughs> yeah, we can even call it just delivery. Delivery, right? parcel yeah. delivery. Yeah. Something big has happened, which means you guys have gone through a massive state of flux. So can you tell us a little bit about how Ship It was formed and what you do and what this big change has been for you? Yeah, absolutely. So five years ago, um, my good mate Will and I thought um, how awful a delivery experience is as a consumer and knowing nothing about logistics or retail, uh, a little wet behind the ears, we thought let's get stuck in. So uh, over a beer, we made that decision and, and started Ship It. Um, really to improve that end-to-end delivery experience. So um, starting with a humble idea and sort of getting it to market and listening to what small businesses wanted um, and what difficulties were, we actually found the reason why delivery experiences suck is because small businesses are not logistics experts, nor should they be. Um, And carriers actually only care about delivering from A to B. They're not in the game of retail. Or customer experience even. They really don't care as long as it gets there. They don't care how it gets there. Well, five years ago, they definitely didn't. And it, yeah. whether it got there or not, terms and conditions are very clear. You know, we don't make any guarantees on delivery, which is a bizarre thing to, to kind of say when you're in the business of delivery. Yeah. Um, and so we started Ship It to provide that transparency and be the glue that sits between the retailer and the end customer. So that's where it started, humble beginnings. Um, fast forward to today, we're a team of 70 people uh, we power close to 2 million deliveries a month uh, for some of Australia's largest retailers and now pushing into some of the world's largest retailers into more markets, um, which has been an absolute challenge, but an absolute joy. Um, and at the same time, I guess a couple of weeks ago, some really sad news kind of fell across the industry with one of the, the kind of trailblazers in our space, Tomando, who we looked up to and, and were quite competitive uh, with um, actually uh, rolling into liquidation. Um, worst time of year possible for any retailer relying on that technology. Um, and our mission has really just been to swing into overdrive and make sure that both retailers, so the senders, and also the people that used to work at Tomando uh, can find a new home to continue doing what they do best. Uh, and that's kind of where, where we sprung into action. So hence the state of flux in the last couple of weeks. So, I mean, 
I guess just we need to probably describe this for people who are maybe not familiar. I'm sure that there are these kind of aggregator businesses all around the mm. world, but here mm. in Australia, and as you said, Tomando have been around for a very long time. I remember using them as a beta tester. <laughs> um, wow. And essentially what you did is you put your details in <laughs> of your parcel and then, then they would send that job out to all the couriers and the couriers would come back mm. with a price. So you could just pick the cheapest price or maybe you wanted hand delivery or something like that you could just pick based on what you needed so you weren't tied down to one courier company uh you had the mm. ability to get the best price because they were price uh price fluctuations depending on demand and sure. then as the market grew a bit more savvier and i know you guys are fabulous at this it was integrating with e-commerce sites yeah yeah that's right and, and i mean it's huge like one of the things that they did exceptionally well is they educated an entire market about the strength of multi-carrier. So um, we've always traditionally put all of our eggs in one basket, which is usually a red and white logo, um, which, which is very good at delivering certain types of parcels, certain types of areas. But really what, what you know, we've come out of this view of let's just go cheapest because cheapest isn't always best for any small business. I know I'm sure that resonates yep. where yep. you've kind of gone cheap and you've, you've had that morning after feeling and like shit shouldn't have gone there. Yep. Um, but you know, really it's about getting carriers to play to their strengths. Um, and that is a tremendous thing. So not only does it save businesses money, it actually improves the ultimate customer experience. Um, and so they educated the market on that. Um, and that's something that we obviously uh, dovetailed nicely into and actually built on top of um, because our product looks at the end-to-end -end delivery experience. Our philosophy is not that the carrier owns the delivery experience because they don't and they don't take ownership of it. Um, the retailer really gets the scarlet letter put against their name if, if the delivery experience is bad. So our job is to empower the merchant um, for that entire delivery experience to make sure they're in control. Yep. I'm going to ask you how you do that in a minute, but I think one of the biggest changes in our business when businesses like yours came about was the ability to send things that were bulky or light but large, like things that didn't fit in a standard prepaid <laughs> satchel or a box. Yeah. All of a sudden, the world opened up and the inventory that we could carry opened up because all you had to do was pick the kind of product that it was and customers are prepared to pay for Correct. shipping. And yeah. I'll, just, I'll just throw this little example in because we talk about this quite a lot when it comes to putting our own biases onto our customers. And you think, oh, in this day and age, everybody wants free shipping. When I was in Seattle just recently, I found this amazing shampoo. It was called Yes to Carrots. Uh -huh. Not expensive. It's like $7 for a half a liter bottle. But we could not, so it was in the Airbnb that we stayed at. So we went to the local shops and they were sold out of conditioner. So we ended up with shampoo. I had one bottle left. On the way to the airport, we stopped at multiple places trying to find this shampoo. Everybody was sold out. But it is amazing for my daughter's hair and for my hair. So I actually, when I came home, I thought, it's a half litre bottle. If I can find it here in Australia for $30, like, I, like that's, that's expensive shampoo, but it lasts a long time, I will pay. No, I was prepared to pay $25 for shipping of this stuff to Australia. Wow. wow. So yeah. you, can't, you can't give people, you can't tell people what they're prepared to pay. Yeah, look, it's, it's a very funny thing, right? So for any small business, and I'm sure this resonates, you know, we get a lot of calls um, from customers and the reason they come to us is like, look, I'm sick of paying for shipping. I just want a live delivery quote onto my checkout. So the customer knows exactly how much it's going to cost and I'm going to pass the full cost on to them. Yep. And we actually say that is probably one of the worst tactics you could engage in because it creates bill shock or, or that unexpected cost at the end of the checkout. So if yeah, I'm buying yeah. a $20 t-shirt and shipping to my area is $40, there is no way I'm buying from you. Um, and what we educate a lot of our smaller customers on to help them grow is to figure out what the average cost of a delivery is. So it, it kind of requires you to kind of put a blindfold on sometimes in particular scenarios. So if you're shipping something out to Perth or uh, Timbuktu, you know, you don't want to um, really look at how much it's costing you to ship. But if you look at it on an average basis and you find out what your average cost is, then it's really easy to look at things like flat rate shipping or free shipping above a certain threshold. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a lot that can be done around the psychology of the shopper at the checkout that we love to educate our merchants on. Mm, yeah. 
I, it's interesting because I think that's really something you have to test and measure, isn't it? Because mm. if, if you've got like, say, a big bulky item, then customers may not have that bill shock. But if you have a commodity, a general commodity, customers have an expectation of what that's going to cost to ship. Oh, absolutely spot on, right? I think um, people get it. If I'm getting a trampoline sent to my house, I'm going to pay for that because I don't have to go down to the shop. I don't have to get a truck and I don't have to put in the back. Like, you know what? Make it easy for me. I'll pay you for it. So let's not put ourselves into a corner here. The other thing too is if I don't have access to store myself and I'm sitting in, I don't know, Toowoomba or my mother-in-law lives in Kelso and she's probably Australia's biggest online shopper. She knows she doesn't have the variety of choice around her. So she's going to pay for shipping and particularly from the US or wherever it may be. Um, if people value it, then they're going to pay for it. Um, so we just need to be very conscious of that. It's never a one size fits all. No, and that's definitely assessing, that comes back to assessing your inventory, your point of difference and your customer. Spot on, spot on. So yeah, that's, I, I, I still remember these, we used to get these bags imported from America and they were twelve ninety five US, but we had to sell them for $40 Australian because of currency conversion and shipping and customs and a margin on top of it. Mm. And, but people were prepared to pay. You couldn't get them anywhere else. So mm. they were like, well, you've done all the hard work just getting them here. I can just turn up and have it. I don't have to wait two weeks for it to arrive. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we are coming up to Christmas. I would love to know, you've been through this for the last few years. What are some of the key issues that you see for merchants when it comes to shipping and parcel delivery during that influx peak season because let's be honest that's happening in about two or three weeks cool so i'll transport your minds back to december 2015 ship it's first christmas season <laughs> we had a gangbusters month um at that time we were we were pretty much just a reseller of freight so what mm -hmm. that meant was um we would get rates with the carriers and we'd sell them back to our merchants um, and for that privilege, we would actually take on board the customer service component because our customers shipping multiple carriers, they want one throat to choke and that throat was mine. Um, so I remember pulling up the little operational dashboard we had and eyeballing every delivery and seeing where it's at. And that major influx of deliveries um, through that period of time, you know, I think the volume doubled, if not tripled in that particular time period on a given month. When you start to break that down on a daily basis, there are some wild fluctuations, right? Um, so the very first observation we had was the obvious volume growth. But then as these deliveries got out the door, there was something else that started to happen, which was this anxiety factor, right? Yes. So if you think about this demand increase and then the fact that most of these purchases are a gift, gift. gifts have deadlines. You need the gift to put under the tree so it can be opened on Christmas Day. Funny fact that. <laughs> so human psychology says, if I don't know when it's coming and I don't know where it is, I'm going to get worried. And if I get worried, I need to talk to somebody. And if I can't talk to somebody that has an answer, I'm going to get pretty upset and annoyed. So we actually found the number of issues raised per delivery also doubled. So what that then means, and it's kind of a term that we coined internally called the, the, the peak season double-double, right? So the double-double is your volume will double, your inquiries will double. So therefore, expect a 300% increase on the amount of queries you're about to get for your deliveries. Um, and what that led us to is more education-based campaigns around, right, what do you need to do to alleviate the anxiety in your end customer and also improve the chances of an on-time delivery? And so yes. there are a few tips I can roll into, but you know, I think I, I would love you to roll into those because I have just this week had a delivery of a brand new shaving cabinet for my bathroom renovation. And the company gave me no indication when it was going to arrive. However, they charged me $20 extra because it was delivered to a residential address and were going to charge me $50 if I wasn't home. And so yeah. Yeah. they sent me a text on the morning to say it was coming today, but Luckily, I work from home, but what if I had to take a day off work to be there? So the whole thing was very stressful for me. It was like, what happens if I, if I just duck out to the shops and it turns out then it's going to cost me another $50? What's amazing about that, Selena, is to that shop owner who sells these cabinets, logistics hasn't really changed for them, right? 
this is how I've always done it. I've booked a delivery. I've charged the customer. It should get delivered. If it doesn't, I'll call the courier, right? Yep. But what's actually happened around them, so the context or environment has changed. Do you remember maybe five or six years ago when you'd book a taxi to the airport? So you call up the night before. I've got an early morning yeah. flight. I need the, the, the taxi to be here at 5.50 a.m. No later, please. You're getting anxious. You don't know where it's at. You call the company again. You wait on hold. You say, oh, has a driver been dispatched yet? Okay, I'm waiting. No problem. I can deal with that level of anxiety. I've got a flight to catch. Fast forward to today. Pull out your phone at 5.51 a.m. Because you're pushing it now. You don't care. Oh, Uber's there. Okay, it says driver will be here in three minutes. Click. Driver's not here in four minutes. I'm super angry, right? Yes, one minute. So, yeah, <laughs> one minute over that time and where the hell are they? I'm going to give them the worst rating of their lives, right? No so the tip for you. Yeah, the consumer, a tip, forget it. We're in Australia, right? So if you think about the consumer expectation shift, it's been huge. And that doesn't just mean your expectation of when a car is going to arrive to take you to the airport has changed. It means everything has changed hey, that food I ordered for delivery on Deliveroo is not here in 32 minutes. I'm super upset. I'm annoyed. I'm getting a refund, right? Remember the days of getting a pizza delivered on a Friday night? Oh, yeah. it's going to be an hour and a half wait. No problem. Yeah. You'd have, Can to, you'd you have to pick ahead. No, yeah, exactly. And now we start to apply this expectation to every aspect of our lives. Um, so that, that kind of the Uberization of experience, that on-demand economy is a very real psychological shift for our shoppers. Yeah. So the very first thing we need to address in the logistics industry is transparency. You know, just imagine, why are people getting so annoyed because they're not getting into it? Why are people getting so angry about the delivery experience? Do they know it's been shipped? Do they know when they're going to get it? Do they know where they need to be to get it? And then do they know how to resolve a problem when it arises? The very simple and easy thing to do is just, Tell them. Just it tell feels, them. It feels like the most obvious answer, doesn't it? Because I was the same. I was thinking, could they not have just sent me a text message to say it's been picked up from the, the thing and then saying it's in Sydney. So at least I had some concept of the fact that it was on its way. And sure enough, they sent me a tracking number, but this is how different our lives are. So I've been in retail for more than a decade. Mm. Tracking numbers were a big thing back when I started and customers would expect, you know, you sometimes you had to explain what a tracking number was, but they would expect to have to go to the website to find out where their delivery was. These days we expect an email and a text message to find out when our parcel is going to arrive. So the expectation has been set. So I think if you are working, if you're either not doing that yeah. yourself or yeah. you're not working with a company who can do it for you, then one, you're behind, way behind in customer experience. But two, exactly what you said, you're going to end up with angry customers who don't want to shop with you again. Correct. Oh, look, we get, we get merchants that come through and go, right, I just need your platform so I can get a tracking number and I can give that tracking number to my customer. And we kind of flip that paradigm and say, well, if your customer has to go and log on to a carrier's website and plug in a tracking number that is arbitrary, you've already failed them as an experience. Yeah. So they want seamlessness of experience. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe my eyes when in 2015 I ordered my Apple Watch. And I don't know if you remember when the Apple Watch launched. It was huge. You couldn't miss it. I was getting emails. I was getting, uh, you know, personalized display ads served up to me, microsites, you know, 3D explorations of the product. I could pivot it. I could look at it. I could virtually try it on. You know, the whole experience was amazing. The marketing campaign, you couldn't actually miss it. Got to the website, made it super easy for me to buy that Apple Watch. That excitement was so real. I clicked buy now, I parted with half a grand and then nothing. Oh, no. And, and it was a tracking experience which was hosted on a, a, you know, a logistics carrier's website. And we're talking about the masters of UX and experience here being Apple, which is the holy yeah. grail. Um, and I've got a tracking number in my email address that I had to go and paste in. And it was one of those experiences where on the day that I was expecting to get the delivery because I had done my homework and I had found out when that carrier was going to be able to deliver it, I actually needed to go to a meeting that was on the other side of town and I no. wasn't there to receive it. Who the hell could I tell? And so I'm refreshing this page on my mobile, looking at all the different updates as to where the delivery is. And it wasn't until I got back to the office that I then refreshed the page and it said delivery attempted. And... <laughs> it was the most gut-wrenching experience I've ever had. And it wasn't even optimized for mobile, which was the other frustrating part because 
you know, I purchased on a mobile. I expect my entire experience to be mobile centric. And, and you I'm purchased a mobile device. And I'm now loading a delivery experience from a carrier's website, which is optimized for, de I wouldn't even say desktop, I'd say green screen, right, from the yeah. 1980s. And that was the major disconnect for us. And this was, it happened to coincide with the time Will and I had decided to leave our jobs to solve this damn problem. And it was just resonant to me as to what we needed to fix. Yeah. And so how do you fix that? How does so, it fix that? Yeah, so look, shameless plug for us. I guess the way that we, we handle that is, you know, from cart to doorstep, you know, from the very first moment the customer hits the checkout, where we can power delivery options which give live ETAs or costs to, to that end customer so they know when they're likely to receive it. Um, and then, you know, from the time that an order is created, so an order is placed, I've clicked purchase, we actually generate a tracking page URL. Um, and so that URL can be sent from the retailer to the end customer from that very moment. And the customer can now view things like, okay, I placed my order at that time. When did it get labeled? So when is it being dispatched? Oh, it's been, it's been labeled. Okay, when does it get booked for pickup by a courier? So now I know I've got transparency on the retailer's process and I know they've done their job. And then once it goes in transit, rather than waiting for the courier to send an update out to the end customer, we send a branded notification from the retailer to the end customer, uh, which is an SMS, which contains a, an estimated date of delivery, um, and an email which does the same thing. And a bunch of frequently asked questions about what to do in the event that you're going to not be home, etc., and what you can do enabling ATL through flight, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then when it moves to the next status update, reminding the customer that delivery is going to happen today, and looking at the psychology of the user, right? So a lot of our retailers were quite hesitant to bombard a customer through email notifications, right? Research says the delivery experience is the one and only time your customer wants to hear from you more. Yeah. Send me more emails, right? Who would have thought? And if you think about the engagement of the customer through that process, the dispatch notification is the world's best performing EDM. So the world's best EDMs can give you like a, 95% open rate. <laughs> you know, uh, look, we've, we've got an 80-odd 80, 80 percent open rate and a 34% click-through rate, right? Yeah. Think about what you can do with that real estate uh, as you keep your customer warm and keep that excitement going. I'm buying an Apple Watch. Keep me excited until it hits my wrist. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don't just stop the excitement and joy when I part with the cash because I don't own it yet. I've just given you money. Um, and so, so that, that really plays to the psychology of the customer. And they'll check that tracking link 2.4 times through the, the delivery's lifespan, right? So very important part of that purchase experience. That is huge. And can I just say, well done, hence why you're here on the podcast, industry Jeez. leader. Um, so because you guys are like you're the customer service team essentially for the, for the merchant, what do you, like what are those sort of frequently asked issues the double doubles that come up during that peak holiday season so we can give the people who are listening some tips on stuff that you can do before it even goes out to make right. sure that that customer experience is seamless great so so look i i might caveat that selena with we do that for where we own the freight relationship the mm -hmm. vast majority of our bookings on the platform today actually run through our, our, our customers' own accounts with the carriers. So we're simply a tech platform there. But yep. to answer the question, because we kind of put ourselves into the shoes of our, our retailers for our small business owners at least, um, there's a few things that we can do. First thing is align expectations up front as clearly as possible. Um, so for the Christmas period or for the peak period, um, being seasonally agnostic, um, <laughs> what... What we can do very easily is tell customers what the cutoff time is. So oh, you, don't, yes. you don't want to tell a customer you can deliver by Christmas or by you know, 24th of December if in actual fact there's a delay. So let me run you through some statistics. Um, the biggest time of the year for retail in Australia online is no longer December, it's November. November. And that's because of Black Friday and Cyber Monday being the single biggest days in the retail calendar. We just um, did an episode on that last week. <laughs> well, that's a very timely. Um, so what's that? It's about six weeks away, right? Yep. Or five and a half now. Um, 
on Black Friday, retailers can expect a 500% increase in daily order volume, right? So that's very real. If I'm selling 100 items, don't check my math here. I'm now selling, oh, so if I've sold 100 orders in one day, I'm now selling 500 orders, right? So uh, yeah, maybe yeah. the math doesn't check out. No. Just 5x, 5x. 5x, yeah. 5x, right? So based on that, if you've got enough staff to pick and pack within your SLA, so if a customer orders express delivery, next day dispatch, if order placed before a certain time, you've got to make sure you can hit that SLA and expect to staff up in order to fulfill that promise, right? Yes. So that's issue number one. And we find that a lot of small businesses, they're, because we're tracking that process from order placed to labelled and booked, we find that that usually takes the average Australian retailer 24 hours to do. And as we get into the busiest time of year, that tends to blow out because of the volume, right? Because we're not yeah. prepared. The second thing, so if, if that's a reality for you, you need to make sure you're not over-promising at that checkout because if you can't even give it to the carrier by the date the customer thinks they're going to receive it, there's a big problem. Huge problem. Second thing to be aware of, ETAs are not guaranteed unless you're shipping with Express Post, right? Keep that in mind. And what often happens, so not only are your warehouse operations or your dispatch operations overwhelmed and inundated, the number of vans on the roads don't automatically increase fivefold on the next day either. And the amount of warehouse space and the amount of workers in the warehouse don't expand 5x overnight either. So what tends to happen is that gets absorbed into the ETA. So based on the number of parcels going up, Simple maths, it basically adds one to two business days to any delivery time frame. So acknowledging that up front and letting the customer know at the checkout, it's going to take us longer to pick a packet. It's going to take us longer to get it to you. That may lose you a sale, but it also loses you a gigantic headache and also a headache which can be shared on social media because you've ruined Christmas. Yep. Um, being pragmatic and realistic at the checkout means you're giving the customers what they want. Number two. Delivery options. If you've only got one method, it's shame on you because the customer expects optionality. You've given them one option. The fault is no one else's but your own if it doesn't get there when the customer expects it. Yeah. So if you have a multi-speed delivery strategy, which is I can sell you standard, I can do that for free, or I can charge you for express, yeah. the customer yeah. makes an elective choice for standard because they don't want to pay for express. Then it's back on them. If the standard delivery doesn't get delivered in time, it's shame on me. I should have chosen the express option. Um, now, that said, if they've chosen the express option and you haven't delivered on your promise, shame on you. So that's kind of where you really need to be clever about the options you offer and how you're communicating that to the end customer. I'll just jump in there and say, because we've had a whole bunch of fairs and festivals, I found a company, and I'm sure there's multiple, I just happened to find this company last year, and they do like three hour delivery in major cities. And yeah. we, did, we did some chatting because I was quite interested because I have uh, a client that has an art gallery. And so mm. we were talking about, could they ship fragile artworks within Sydney and what kind of cost? And the cost he gave me from one side of Sydney to the other, from Sydney to Balmain. So over the Harbour Bridge was like $35. Now, bearing in mind the tolls to drive there, are about $14 if you were delivering it yourself, let alone you've got to have a van big enough for these pieces of artwork. Yeah. And as a customer, $30, $35 to have a piece of artwork, and the one we were talking about was like two metres by 1.5 metres. It was quite big. And like that just seems ridiculously cheap. And I think this goes back to what I said earlier is customers are prepared to pay to get it there quick. Like there are times... There are times when, um, so I met Rob at a panel just recently and I've lost quite a lot of weight. So the day before I opened my wardrobe and went, crap, I actually don't have anything that fits. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed I had a very large belt on the pantsuit I was wearing because it was too big. <laughs> but I went onto a couple of websites where I knew I could pay $15 for three hour delivery. Spot on. Now I wasn't actually, I didn't actually find anything but I knew that option was there from that retailer Spot to on. get the product if I found it. And it was my own fault. I was prepared to pay $15 if I found something. So I think 
it's making it really clear that just because you might be a tight ass when it comes to shipping, it doesn't mean your customers are. No, and I and I think you've touched on a really good point. So the data says 71% of customers are willing to pay for faster delivery methods, right? So particularly on a Friday night, particularly in the lead up to a big event. And I think, you know, we, we talked about Glam Corner and, and kind of, you know, they're one of our, our um, one of the most amazing customers and, and they... They obviously know that very well that around certain events and seasons it's really you know important to get the delivery to the customer on time and to offer them those options um just touching on your point on the artwork right so a 34 dollar delivery so if i'm a retailer selling uh t-shirts that cost 20 dollars, i'm going to charge you 34 dollars for delivery there's a big disconnect in expectation but if i'm selling you a two thousand dollar artwork hey 34 bucks chump change no problem for me but so even then, a- I don't know, if you're selling me a T-shirt, that I, it's like back to my shampoo. If you had that shampoo, I was prepared to pay $25 to get it shipped. I may have even paid 30 if I, I just would have bought more. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's, but it's not rocket science, Selena. When you're thirsty and you walk into a 7-Eleven and you buy yourself a 600 ml Coke bottle that costs you four fifty. Or you can go to Coles and buy in the non-refrigerated section on special a 1.5 litre bottle for $1.10. What are you going to do, right? So it comes down to urgency and context. Mm -hmm. So if the context is I have a big event and I need it now, I don't care what it costs. No. If I don't have a big event and I'm actually price comparing you to everybody else like I do my regular grocery shop, I'm going to make the effort to to go through some pain to get the best price, right? Yep. So it just depends on your product mix. If you're in the commoditized category of selling Tresemme shampoo as opposed to Yes to Carrots shampoo, I'm not going to pay for shipping on Tresemme because I don't no. expect to. Yes to no. Carrots, can't find it anywhere. I'll pay you 25 bucks. Just give me the damn bottle. I'll buy your stuff on Amazon where I get free delivery because I'm a Prime member. <laughs> There you go. There you go. But that, that's, a real, that's a real threat and concern for a lot of retailers out there that don't have the scale of Amazon. So you can't afford to give free shipping on those things. Um, and this is where it requires you to get clever about your product portfolio. Um, I could probably go into that space, but I won't because I know we want to talk about logistics, but you want to differentiate your offering so that shipping doesn't come to be the, 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 the death the, signal for your business. The obstacle. Correct. So yeah. there's, a, there's a great webinar for anyone interested. If you just Google ship at 99 bikes webinar on our website, we talk about the holy grail of net positive on shipping. Net positive is a great term coined by our friends at 99 bikes. Um, but it does suggest where you can start to leverage a very clever shipping pricing strategy to make money on the shipping process, not lose money. So that's wow. a, very interesting approach and I really recommend watching that webinar um, and it's available on our blog so you can just jump on our blog and have a look at that um, but anyway yeah so conscious Selena back to your questions around what else can we do through the Christmas period or the peak season mm-hmm. um, aligning expectations is super important second one is if you don't have tracking notifications to your end customer that you're in control of get ahead of that now we can help um, the third bit is make sure you have this is actually really interesting. Deliveries are not unusual. Deliveries go from A to B. Deliveries have a time that we estimate for a delivery to occur from A to B. Deliveries go through certain stages. They get picked up, they get sorted, they then go on to a van, they then get delivered, right? Yep. So therefore, why are we so reactive when a customer comes through with a problem? So a customer comes through, I didn't get my delivery and the ETA is already passed. Where the hell is it? We're dumbfounded. We're surprised. We're a retailer. I don't don't know. I wasn't watching your delivery. You're watching your delivery. It's not my problem. So now you jump into the career portal and you're kind of looking it up and you see the same information your customer saw that triggered them to give you a call. Then you call up the courier and then you try and find out from the courier where the hell the delivery is at. Then you call the customer back and you tell the customer, customer's already shitty because it's already late and now you're telling them that you don't know when it's going to be resolved and you're hoping it's going to get to them the next day and you're stuck. If we could flip that for a minute and we could sit there and say, "Mm -hmm, well, I know that the delivery takes two business days to get from my warehouse to the customer's doorstep. And I know that once it goes in transit, it should take an additional one business day to get to the customer. And I know that once it goes on board for delivery, it should be delivered that day. If it's not in transit, 
two days before it needs to be delivered, you have a problem. If it's not on board for delivery the day that it's supposed to be delivered, you have a problem. Yeah. So why can't we get proactive about delivery and start alerting our customers that the delivery is going to be delayed? Oftentimes, retailers shy away from doing that because they think, well, I don't want to tell the customer there's a problem because then you tell them there's a problem, right? Transport yourself to the last time you were on a flight that was delayed and you're sitting on the tarmac and the plane ain't moving anywhere, yeah? And you're oh, looking that was at your watch. about four weeks ago. <laughs> you're watching, you're thinking, when am I going to land in Melbourne? When am I going to land in Sydney? I've got a big meeting on. It's going to take me an hour to get from... So you're sitting there thinking, what is going on? And then the pilot chimes in, uh, good morning, passengers. We're just waiting for runway number five to open up. It's going to take us 10 to 15 minutes. should be able to push off and we'll land you there safely around this time. We're going to be a little bit late, but you know, there's not much we can do about it. Sigh of relief. I have information. I can't do anything about it, but hey, I'm subject to the <laughs> capability of the person flying the damn plane in the airports. I can't do anything. What I need right now is information. And so that's what we encourage a lot of our customers to do. And, um, you know, if you kind of look at the iconic, they've started doing proactive alerts to their customers and it's actually reduced their ticket count around 60% for delayed parcels. So it's you telling just think their how customers. Much, how much money that saves? Like t- taking the customer experience out of it because the customer experience is, is awesome when that happens, but how much money is that saving not faffing back and forward and even just, you need less people to deal with less support tickets. Absolutely. So like what we tend, what we did, and this actually came out of that Christmas peak in 2015, the double, double, the double, double. Uh, our, uh, our kind of very first, you know, founding CTO, Josh, he actually had to jump onto support tickets. And if you know any good engineers, you know that there are two things, super intelligent and very lazy. And so what that meant was he said, I'm never jumping onto the phones or Zendesk ever again. I've gone ahead and built a proactive ticket alert system. So what we did is we kind of algorithmically determined when there's a delay in a parcel and we create tickets proactively into Zendesk that then push directly into the courier systems so that the couriers can come back and tell us where a delivery is at before a customer's even noticed. And so that equips you with information that you didn't otherwise have. And that's a capability we've now given to our largest customers in the land so that it integrates into their Zendesk and they can do the same thing. That is just a huge, and I think I must be an engineer at heart because I think that's why I automate everything because the minute you do it once, you just think, really? I have to do this again? Is there not yeah. an app that can do this for me? I literally had myself the other day getting really shitty with Uber because they introduced another tap in between me and booking a car. It's like, why can't I just press it once? Why don't you confirm? So, yeah, you know, there's, there's that. Um, but that drives a lot of great innovation. So don't give up on that. Um, yeah, so that, 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 that would be the, the other thing. Getting proactive versus reactive will save you a lot of heartache. Not only does it reduce the amount of tickets that come in, it reduces the urgency with which you need to resolve an issue. So if you know that a delivery has gone missing in transit, you can straight away kick into, I'm going to send you a replacement customer X. Yes. And, hey, Sally, you know what? You want that T-shirt? It's coming tomorrow. We'll just put it on the next truck. And, I'm, and you know what? I'm even sending it to the $34 dude that's bringing it across Balmain Bridge right now. So you can start to deliver these great experiences at the busiest time of year. Uh, I would love to, maybe we'll have to get you back to talk about that because we've been talking for quite some time now. But I love the concept of talking about refunds returns customer experience Mm. absorbing costs passing on costs all that kind of stuff but i think we've given people a lot to just take on board and absorb (laughs) for this episode Uh, so we might we might tee you up to come back in the new year if people this has been awesome i think there's just so many usable tips that people if if they take one thing out of this that Mm. it can hugely increase their customer experience which will probably increase their sales as well but if people are, are you only in Australia? We are in a few countries at the moment. So mm-hmm. we're obviously, we're Sydney based, um, found on the streets of Surrey Hills, but we're in the CBD here. We operate Australia uh, domestically and internationally. Uh, we operate in New Zealand. We also operate in Singapore, Malaysia, and we will soon start operating in South Africa and the US and the UK. Yay. So if people are super excited about everything that Ship It could do for them, um, and I'm always happy because it integrates with Shopify, where <laughs> can they find more information? Yeah, shipit.com. Um, I definitely, so ship it with two Ps, two Ps. not one, two Ps, S-H-I-P-P-I-T.com. 
Um, and check out our blog, check out our resources, sign up for an account. The moment you do that, within an hour or so, you should be called by one of our solution specialists to run you through the platform and what you can, you can do with your business. Um, so look, we'd love to help you this, this holiday period. Uh, just give us a buzz and uh, come on through. Cool. And we will definitely link to that. I'll get the uh, URL from you and we'll link to that webinar because I think that there's a lot of people in there who would love to know more. Maybe I need to get the 99 bikes people on to talk about this. What was it? Net profit. Net positive on shipping. Net, net positive on shipping. Oh, it's right, not a down. disease. It's not a disease. It's a concept. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get you to connect me with them because I think I need to know more about that. I do, definitely will. Thanks so much for sharing all of this today, Rob. My pleasure, Selena. Thank you for having me on board. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You can find all of the show notes over at selenanight.com. If you found something that you heard today particularly useful, I'd love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And of course, feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit by listening to it. Want more retail biz strategies? You can watch the Bringing Business to Retail TV show where each week I'll answer a question or provide you with a simple, actionable retail biz strategy that you can implement in your business right away. If you have a question or a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Drop my team an email at podcast at and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great week.